Good afternoon and welcome to lecture 5 of ECL 706. Uh, you remember uh, we are discussing of different formwork materials uh, in past few lectures. Uh, we discussed timber and plywood in one of the lectures. Uh, then we discussed steel and aluminum that is metal form uh, met, uh, metal form uh, in another lectures uh, in today uh, in today's lecture we are going to cover uh, some other formwork materials uh, you will find that although they are not that predominantly used but still uh, they find lots of applications they find lots of applications under some uh, special circumstances so we are going to uh, discuss uh, plastic forms uh, then certain other materials such as hardboards, fiberglass, GRP forms, plaster of Paris forms. Then we are going to discuss form coatings and release agents, form anchor, tie systems and form liner. So this is what we are planning to cover in today's lecture. Uh, Although they are not that predominantly used, still we must learn about some of the materials such as plastic forms, hardboards, fiberglass and plaster of Paris forms. This is because they give you, they give you lots of options to you for decision making. Whenever you have a problem of selecting uh, one material out of different uh, available formwork materials. So we start with this plastic forms. Uh, you know it is a better form, uh, better alternative of timber and plywood. Uh, there are different regions towards it. Uh, for example, you know they are eco-friendly. You do not have to cut uh, trees to produce these uh, timber as well as plywood. Uh, they can give you a very good quality finish. They are light in weight so you can transport them easily. Uh, Unlike metal forms, they they do not they do not rust, and cleaning after every use is also easy. So once you have removed your form, uh, you can quickly clean them up and you can make them ready for next application. So these are some of the benefits. Uh, further, these molds can resist uh, mechanical handling. Uh, most of these plastic forms they de they do not deform uh, very easily they can be quickly assembled and stripped so the labor involvement would be quite less and naturally your cost for labor charges would be on a lower side on a lower side we see some more features for plastic forms uh, the joining of different uh, plastic forms is not that difficult. You can easily join them. And most important, uh, you can get a large number of repetitions using these plastic forms. So they can be repeated for a large number of times. So the cost would come down. So the cost would come down. As I told you, the finish, the concrete finish is quite good. The concrete finish is quite good if you are using uh, these plastic forms, especially if you are using these plastic seat linings. Uh, these forms uh, give you greater freedom for designing. Uh, you can perform different types of design using these uh, plastic forms. There are no size limitations. You can get it virtually in any size as per your requirement. And Wherever you require some architectural features, some aesthetical uh, appearance is needed in your concrete, uh, you will find that plastic is one of the most preferred alternative, one of the most preferred alternatives. Uh, some of the best known plastic seathings, uh, if you are trying to use uh, plastic as a seathing material, uh, you can see uh, there are a PVCs, different types of PVC. Uh, different types of neoprene, uh, polyester, strengthened with glass fibers. So these these are normally used for uh, seating, for as a seating material, as a seating material. So similar to plywood, 
you can use PVC, neoprene or for that matter polyester strengthened with glass fiber. Uh, they uh, they can give you a very good application as far as uh, formwork seating is concerned. Uh, then there are different types of uh, plastic forms also. For example, a glass fiber reinforced plastic (GRP). Uh, these molds are especially useful for forming the architectural surface. So if you just try to note down some of the major plastic forms. Uh, GRP is one which you can claim, uh, which you can easily mention. So, GRP is there. Then you have, then you have a polypropylene molds. And fiberglass forms. fiberglass forms. Now GRP you use mostly for providing architectural features, for providing architectural features. If you want to make certain pattern, you can use these GRP. Uh, these polypropylene forms are used for casting waffle slabs, waffle. You also call them as trough, either waffle or trough. I will show you how do they look like. Uh, when it comes to fiberglass forms, they are very strong, very strong and they are also suitable for, suitable for waffle slab or of unit construction, especially in case of uh, large floor area. If you require large floor area where lots of repetitions are, where lots of uh, repetitions are expected, uh, you can use fiber glass forms. So these are some of the examples of uh, commonly used plastic forms, uh, commonly used plastic forms. GRP mostly for architectural features, polypropylene forms mostly for waffle or trough. Uh, technology class, do you understand this waffle? Have you seen waffle slab construction? Waffle. Do you understand this? Uh, sometimes uh, when you are when you are are looking for a large column free space. Suppose you are looking for a very large column free space. Suppose this whole area you want to, uh, you want to have a slab, uh, but without having internal columns. Maybe you can have a column here, you can have a column here, a column here and a column here, but you do not want internal spaces, uh, internal columns, right. In such case, uh, you might have seen uh, if I draw it in plan, uh, maybe some something like this you might have seen some grid slabs, something like this. I am drawing it in plan. If you try to draw it in uh, section, it would look something like this. So you have one waffle like this. Then there is a space, another waffle like this and another waffle like this. So sometimes, sometimes these waffles, these waffles are precast, prefabricated. Sometimes if the number of waffles to be cast are less, you do it at site itself, at site itself. So this can be either cast in situ or it could be precast. If it is precast, then once you have erected the form, let us say these are your form, these are your form, 
that is support you have erected you have erected the support for these waffles you erect these waffles and then now you tie the reinforcement here as well as on top and then cast the remaining portion so cast the remaining portion uh, have you seen such type of construction technology class this is what we call waffle slab construction you have seen uh, i think in uh, one of the major banks in adi sababa i could see this kind of construction i forgot the name of the bank but it's a very uh, a large bank of uh, adi sababa there i saw this kind of construction normally when you want a large hall large hall banquet hall uh, you try to go in for such a uh, column free spaces uh, and there by there you try to use these waffle waffles uh, if you want to make a bigger unit it would be something like this sometimes it would be of this shape these members are very thin it would be like this so one waffle unit would look something like this one waffle unit would look something like this uh, its dimension could be uh, maybe 1.5 meter uh, in this direction other direction also the same maybe 1.5 by 1.5 meter so you have a grid size of 1.5 meter so this is also 1.5 this is also 1.5 so the sizes of course uh, may vary but this is how this is how they look like this is how they look like now you remember uh, any anybody who has seen such kind of construction okay so normally what is done is if you are trying to do it uh, uh, in a pre cast manner uh, you have you have some uh, frp mold fiber reinforced plastic mold uh, because here the removal is easy and the kind of surface that you get concrete surface is extremely good is of extremely good quality so people normally prefer frp although this is slightly costly uh, this is slightly costlier uh, especially if you have less number of repetition if less number of uses are expected then it is not economical to go in for frp mold frp mold will be preferable only when you have uh, maybe repetitions of the order of maybe 50 or 60 or maybe 100 so these kind of plastic molds are specially suited for specially suited for a uh, waffle or trough application uh, similarly if you talk of uh, the grp uh, they are again used for architectural surfaces uh, you want to have different kinds of curves uh, there you can use them and you can expect to get a very good quality finish so this is about the plastic form this is about the plastic form now you understand it's a it's a better alternative of wood and uh, let's say timber and plywood uh, it gives you uh, different advantages for example it's light in weight uh, handling is easy transportation is easy because weight wise it's uh, light uh, you can join them easily uh, you can assemble and dismantle them quite easily and so your cost for labor would be quite less uh, cost of labor would be quite less uh, you have a flexibility in designing so depending on a different kind of application whether you want to use them for architectural purposes or whether you want to use them for uh, let's say waffle slab construction if you have more number of repetitions expected uh, you find plastic forms uh, become a, a useful alternative become a useful alternative now we move on to some some uh, different types of form materials 
as I told you, they are not that frequently used. So only for very special uh, purposes, they are used. For example, uh, you can see this plaster of Paris forms. Now here again, these forms are primarily used for uh, ornamental purposes. Uh, you, you want to make different complicated shapes out of concrete. Remember, everything we are talking in terms of a concrete construction. So, if you want different complicated uh, geometrical shapes and you have difficulties in forming it with uh, timber or plywood alone. So, what we do is we make a frame, we make a supporting frame out of some timber and plywood, some timber and plywood. And then, then we, then we uh, put plaster of Paris on it, plaster of Paris on it, right. Uh, why we are using plaster of Paris? Because now we can give them different shapes, we can give them different shapes. So they are quite flexible, some, some places you want to increase the thickness, you want to increase the slope. These things you will find that timber and plywood, it will be extremely difficult to uh, make it exactly of that shape. So a basic framework you prepare using uh, timber and plywood or for that matter any other material and then the patch up work and the final finish is provided by a uh, plaster of Paris. Now when this gets set, now you pour the concrete, now you pour the concrete, you will find that the concrete surface also would be very good. Concrete surface also would be very good. Once you have cast the concrete and the concrete has gained the strength required strength then what we do is we we dismantle the we dismantle the whole thing so you will find that uh, in terms of uh, reusability in terms of reusability these forms are not that good not that good in fact you cannot repeat them more than once or more than twice so these are the limitations but the advantage is you can you can use them uh, for very complicated kind of an application. So is that clear to your technology class, plaster of Paris forms? Do you understand? Uh, it is the same material, it is the same material, uh, uh, it is clear, no? it is it, the same material which uh, normally doctors use whenever there is a fracture. So suppose there is some fracture, they put this a plaster of Paris and then uh, they let it solidify and then uh, same manner uh, what you do here also is very similar. First you prepare the uh, basic framework, apply plaster of Paris, let it solidify, uh, pour the concrete, once the concrete has gained strength you dismantle the whole, th whole thing, you dismantle the whole thing. So this is how plaster of Paris forms are used. Now we see hardboards. Now hardboard also is an alternative material. Uh, you will find that you will find that they are also useful in, uh, in some situation. In some situation, basically when you talk of hardboard, uh, they are the board manufactured from wood uh, fiber uh, under controlled combination of pressure heat and moisture. So uh, you, you try to control the pressure, heat and moisture and then you, then you manufacture from wood fibers. So, uh, now uh, these, these are basically tempered, these are basically tempered uh, through different means. One of the means is uh, by impregnating with uh, drying walls uh, which are basically stabilized by backing or heating after impregnation. Uh, when you talk of their thicknesses, uh, hard hardboard, hardboard uh, you find them they are uh, very, uh, they are of very small thicknesses of the order of about 6 mm, 6 millimeter. Uh, they are flexible and they can be used for lining of curved surfaces. So suppose uh, you, have a, you have a curved surface to be cast. If you just see here, uh, if you have some curved surfaces to cast. Suppose this is some concrete element, this you have to cast. Now as I told you, if your, if your curvature is very steep, very steep, you won't be able to bend maybe 
12 mm plywood you won't be able to bend uh, or for that matter you won't be able to bend these 19 mm plywood beyond a certain beyond a certain uh, radius so under such situation these hard boards especially 6 mm hard board you find them they come to your rescue so they, they since they are flexible you can you can uh, you can uh, bend them in your desired shape say for example this is your hard board this is your hard board but since uh, its thickness is less you need to have supporting member so either the timber or maybe some other plywood uh, you need to back them up you need to back them up so this is your shutter this is your shutter panel now this is your shutter panel you uh, connect them together and then uh, then uh, cast the curved surfaces so hard boards are uh, very suitable for uh, such application where you want a very steep curve to be cast in concrete so there it comes to your rescue so is the hard board clear and when does it uh, when when you find it uh, most appropriate to use is it clear to you technology class hard board basically they are made out of wood fiber through some manufacturing processes uh, it's quite flexible thickness wise it's quite less of the order of 6 mm so you can bend them quite easily but since they are of very light thicknesses very less thicknesses you need to have proper stiffness to back them up so this is as simple as that so is it clear to you fine we can move on to the next type of material uh, yes uh, other category of form material we know it we know it as lost forms so we call them as lost forms now as the name suggests as the name suggests they are lost after every application they are lost after every application so no question of reusability no if you want to use them again forget about these lost forms this is because these forms these lost forms are left along with the along with the in situ concrete and they form an integral plank of uh, and they form uh, they are left there itself they are left there itself because you will find that uh, removing them would be more costlier than leaving it in its own position leaving it in own position now there are different types of lost forms uh, for example uh, you can see uh, in this particular slide uh, there are precast concrete planks there are pressed fiber planks there are cardboard tubes then you have precast reinforced concrete joists and clay filler blocks uh, then you have ferro cement planks so these are some of the examples of these are some of the examples of uh, lost forms there are other types of lost forms also uh, there are other types of lost forms also i will tell you its application i will tell you its uh, application and uh, so that you can appreciate why we are trying to lose them out rather than retrieving them so suppose you have a you have a silo to be constructed there are different types of silos of different diameters uh, let's say this is a silo of maybe 25 meter diameter height would be of the order of maybe say 80 meter height would be maybe 80 meter now i'm not going to give you the details of this but just imagine that you have to cast one slab at this level you have to cast one slab let's say at 80 meter height or 70 meter height this is the slab suppose this is the slab you have to cast now you will find that since the height is of the order of 70 meter and 80 meter if you try to if you try to erect a staging from here if you try to erect forms from here like this and try to support this slab on temporary formwork surface like this 
you will find that this becomes very very costly very costly and time consuming more than the cost the time lost would be tremendous very costly and highly time consuming so under such uh, such circumstances what we do is what we do is uh, we have uh, different types of material i gave you some of the examples for example precast concrete planks some of the examples i gave you was precast concrete planks uh, then you have pressed fiber planks uh, and many more uh, many more types of lost form now under such application normally what we use there is a product by uh, name rola deck there is a product by name rola deck uh, it's basically it's basically kind of a corrugated seat it's basically kind of a uh, corrugated seat corrugated seat uh, maybe of different type of profile something like this now the reason they have they are giving this shape is because uh, this makes it more rigid more rigid so depend uh, depending on your application depending on the manufacturer these profiles may vary these profiles may vary what we do is uh, this uh, roller deck in this case uh, we put it we put it and support it on the walls so this is the silo wall so we are supporting it from here we are supporting it from here so you will find that there is no need of there is no need of there is no need of uh, scaffolding frame or the centering frame or the form work to support this particular uh, load application right so nothing is inside nothing is inside it is supported on the walls it is supported on the walls and then you cast then you cast the slab on top of it and then leave it as leave it as it is because you will find that you will have to make lots of efforts to even remove this lots of effort to even remove this and uh, it will also consume time it will also consume time so uh, in some of the cases uh, people find this to be more economical more economical than the other alternatives so do you understand under what situation you may have to you may have to uh, lose the formula and still you will be uh, finding that uh, less costly do you understand that technology class now okay so so you understand now what is the lost form this is basically that form which is left and not removed even after your concrete has gained the strength so naturally there is no question of reuse okay and i have explained you just one instance uh, where such forms are found to be useful uh, there are many such applications there are many such applications we will come to know as and when we progress in this particular course uh, now there is another there is another material type uh, which is known by gypsum boards so sometimes you find gypsum boards are also uh, and uh, also a valuable option to you uh, especially when you are going in for artistic design or ornamental design uh, if you want to achieve uh, these uh, uh, artistic design or a pattern uh, in concrete you will find a gypsum boards are also sometimes one of the options now what we do here is uh, we we try to uh, reinforce the gypsum mix with some organic fiber or coir uh, in order to get the toughness because remember these uh, gypsum boards 
on their own are not that strong so you want to reinforce them with some organic fiber organic fiber so that uh, you get uh, required structural toughness uh, now one advantage here you will find uh, when you are using gypsum boards is that uh, the concrete quality gets enhanced gets enhanced this is because uh, the the extra waters the superfluous water in the concrete gets absorbed uh, gets absorbed by these gypsum boards by it uh, gets absorbed by these gypsum boards which results in which results in uh, improved strength as well as appearance as well as appearance so just understand two things this is again uh, some option to you of especially for uh, aesthetic and architectural design purposes especially if you are using them in concrete uh, in order to increase the strength you reinforce uh, organic fiber uh, in the gypsum mix uh, uh, concrete quality also gets improved uh, gets improved because the water gets absorbed by these uh, gypsum boards uh, however one of the disadvantages is uh, these gypsum boards are quite fragile they are quite fragile uh, and uh, that's the reason uh, it's uh, um, the widespread use of this material uh, is prevented is prevented so the fragility or the weakness uh, is the main main drawback for uh, such kind of materials so do you understand gypsum boards under what circumstances they are used how they are uh, how they are strengthened uh, what impact does it have on the quality of concrete surface that is resulting out of uh, the gypsum board application is it clear to your technology class now you one thing you might have noticed that uh, we are now talking of uh, such materials which are not very widely used but still they can be considered as an option for some special applications mostly in case of uh, maybe when we are doing some concrete at a very high level very high uh, very large height or maybe for doing a special type of slab or maybe for doing some special kind of uh, architectural design uh, in concrete so all these things uh, you find that uh, some of these materials may be useful and that's why it's important to get some idea about these materials so that's that that's the reason uh, i took this up uh, in one of the lectures now we move on to some of the accessories some of the you can say side materials that you use uh, in form work applications uh, you will find that the form coatings either you call them as form coatings or you call them as release agents release agents are again uh, are again a very important component of any form work any form work now i will tell you what for these form coatings are applied what for these form coatings are applied uh, you will notice that suppose you have uh, suppose you have to cast one concrete wall let's say the wall thickness is maybe 300 mm wall thickness is 300 mm let's say this is your wall now uh, you have made the shutter using let's say a uh, plywood let's say this is plywood and then you have a uh, uh, timber pieces something like this and uh, okay this plywood i will make it something like this suppose this is your plywood and this is the stiffener backing member and then another set of uh, uh, another set of uh, form work component uh, we will discuss each of these components separately when we discuss wall form work for the timing just understand that uh, if you just try to bring it and put it here suppose now you have put it here so now this is somewhere here one piece only i am showing the similar piece would be on this side on its top and here also on its top so another piece here one another piece here and then like this suppose this is how this is how you want to plan the you want to plan the uh, construction of this wall 
Now what you will find is that if you do not apply any release agent on this surface, if you do not apply anything here, no release agent, you will find that after you have cast the concrete, so concrete has been poured here. Now once it has attained the required strength, you want to take it, uh, you want to take them out, take them out. You will find that uh, it will be very difficult to, it will be very difficult to uh, pull that apart. You won't be able to, you won't be able to uh, take them out uh, easily if you have not used any kind of form coating or release agent. So basically these release agents, uh, it's kind of a wall, it's kind of a wall. Uh, in conventional uh, construction, what people do is they mix uh, some diesel plus grease. So they mix it in some proportion, and it's it's like a it's like a liquid now, and then they apply it on these surfaces, on these surfaces, and then they bring it here, and then they bring it here. So once you do this, once you do this, you will find that now the concrete does not stick to, does not stick to your seething material. It could be plywood, it could be timber, it could be metal, uh, both, uh, it could be aluminum, it could be steel, anything. So what you find is that once you have, once you have applied some form of release agent or coating agent, uh, it, it provides an ease. It gives you an ease in desuttering or stripping of forms. So now the forms are uh, stripped quite easily. Now the forms are stripped quite easily. So this is pr uh, this is primarily the reason for using these uh, form coating or release agents. I gave you one example of form coating, which is. Uh, which is uh, most widely used still, especially in conventional construction. Uh, you mix maybe a 5 liter of diesel and 1 kg of grease. Uh, you mix them, you stir, stir them properly and then with the cotton waste, you just uh, apply on the uh, uh, seething surface, seething material. So this gives, this gives, uh, this what it does is, uh, it basically forms some kind of uh, soapy surface. So now the surfaces are uh, some sort of uh, you can say lubrication has been done uh, which prevents concrete uh, sticking to the uh, sticking to these uh, seating materials. So is that clear to your technology class? Okay, now there are different types of there are different types of uh, seating material. Uh, there are different types of seating materials. Uh, we will see uh, some of the some of the uh, generic names. Uh, although the manufacturers they give you uh, lots of names, uh, they give you lots of names. But we want to understand we want to understand some generic names. Uh, but before that, uh, you can just see, uh, if you lo just look at this particular slide, uh, it, uh, it tells you about the primary objective of coating and releasing agents, uh, basically to ensure easy striking and without injuring the form and the concrete. So you do not have to apply some kind of a pressure to keep it, uh, to take it out, no, we want to avoid that. So that your concrete does not get damaged. Besides, you also do not want to spoil your forms. Now one of the requirements of these, uh, these uh, a, uh, release agents are that uh, you do not want to get any stain, any stain on your concrete surface. Sometimes what happens is that uh, some very bad quality release agent, they leave some colors they leave some stains on the concrete surface. So sometimes if you see, 
these uh, concrete surfaces would be appearing black black this comes especially when instead of a good diesel if you are using waste diesel if you are using waste diesel normally it is black in color uh, you will find uh, it leaves certain stain stain on the concrete surface so we do not want that we do not want that because you will have to rub that surface and then you may have to brush it and maybe you have to do some kind of a treatment that we do not want that we do not want and that is why uh, you should use some proper uh, release agent uh, either by um, putting uh, either by mixing uh, grease and diesel together in good proportion or uh, buying some uh, standard uh, products uh, uh, provided by some reputed manufacturers. Now, not only they help you in uh, striking off easily, uh, it also gives uh, added life to your uh, form work. So, now your form can give you some more repetitions because they are not getting spoiled, they are not getting spoiled, it is also not spoiling the concrete. So, client will not tell you to change the change the seating material. So, you can prolong their life, you can prolong their life. So, this is this is one of the advantages of uh, using these uh, release agents. Uh, I will just uh, quickly uh, show you what uh, in what are the uh, kind of packing you can get it. See, you can see uh, I have chosen three brands uh, for uh, these release agents. Uh, I am just trying to show you the packing, uh, in what kind of packing they are coming. Uh, you can find it on the net. There are many manufacturers uh, giving you these uh, form coatings and release agents. Uh, what we are interested here is, uh, to understand different types of release agents. Uh, you can see the most common is neat voils with surfactants. The first category is first category is neat voils with surfactants this is one category mainly used for steel forms. If you want to apply it on steel surface, if you want to apply it on aluminum surface, uh, you can go in for this variety of uh, form coating or release agent mainly used for steel, mainly used for steel. Uh, then you have uh, mold cream emulsions. Uh, these are mainly suitable for timber and plywood surfaces, for timber and plywood surfaces. And finally, you have some chemical release agents, chemical release agent category. Uh, which can be used on all types of form face whether it is timber, whether it is ply, whether it is steel, uh, all types of form face you can use this uh, chemical release agents. So, do you understand, do you understand the form coating or release agent technology class? Yes, technology class, is it clear? Okay. Now, now we move on to a next uh, type of uh, form material, uh, which is again very important, and you find uh, they are useful in different application. Uh, we call them as form anchors. We call them as form anchors. Now, if you go through this slide, it tells you. Uh, these form anchors are devices 
embedded in previously poured concrete and are used for securing form work for the subsequent lifts. If you want, you can note down the first bulleted statement and then try to understand what it means. I will tell you with the help of one small sketch, then it will be more clear. So, basically these are devices which are embedded in previously poured concrete and are used for securing form work for the subsequent lifts, for the subsequent lifts. So, now if you just look at this situation, suppose this is your ground level, this is your ground level and you have to construct let us say a wall of 10 meter height. the wall is of 300 mm let us say. This is just an hypothetical case because for 10 meter wall you may find that 300 mm is not enough. But idea is not to go for that design, I am just trying to con, uh, explain you the applicability of the application of rather these form anchors. Now, what we do conventionally is, let us say we cast maybe 2.4 meter first, okay, by having the form on both the sides and alignment, okay. This is how we cast this. Then we have to cast another one, then we have to cast the next lift because remember we have to go up to 10 meter. So, what we do is this is 2.4 meter is now already cast, this is already cast. I want to add another 2.4 meter, so I want my workers to go up, I want support for this at this level. So, what I do? I may have to erect some tower like this. Both sides and then this can hold my this can hold my form work for this surface as well as for this. Similarly, thing here also you have this form work. like this and maybe something like this. So, do you understand this technology class? Do you understand this what I have done? Okay. So, then you cast this 2.4 meter. Now, after this is done, this tower you extend it to this level, cast the another portion and this way you go on, this way you go on doing it. Is it clear? This is conventional way. This is time consuming and it may be costly also. Now, just think of this approach. The first lift, no problem, you cast it in the same manner what you had done in the previous case. But before while you were trying to cast this what we do is we leave certain material inside. We leave certain materials inside. I will tell you how does they look, how do they look like. So, basically what we are doing is while casting the first lift, I am leaving some material something like this here. So, this is my form work, this is my form work 
and this is my internal portion of wall this is the wall so what happens i pour all concrete here so this gets embedded embedded this gets embedded now i am having this so this is a solid thing this is a solid thing like this now what i do whatever portion i had left out here at this height here i will use them to erect one bracket and i will use this bracket to support the form work for next level then again i will leave this device here and do the concrete so what difference we are doing here what difference we are making here compared to the first one yes you guessed it right we don't need to we don't need to have this support right from the ground so this is not needed now because the whole thing is supported on the member which we had left earlier so this is what we are talking of as form anchor one that we are leaving it inside the concrete of previous pour previous lift is this clear to you technology class is this clear okay now i i there are different types of designs for this particular shape embedded part i will show you i will show you some of them for example if you just look at uh, this uh, these particular uh, anchors uh, you can try to understand how they might be embedded how they might be embedded uh, depending on the kind of shape depending on the nature of the form anchor the load carrying capacity varies the load carrying capacity varies uh, in this case if you see the screw anchor the first one uh, as well as this pigtail anchor the last one in this slide the last one in this slide uh, they are used for heavy load application suppose uh, you want to you are uh, uh, anticipating very heavy loads then you should be using this uh, pigtail anchor or the screw anchor so you understand how does uh, how it looks like so i i just uh, give you one example of this pigtail anchor how we put it here so something like this now this whole thing is kept inside this whole thing is flushing with the form work so this is your form work this is your form work and this is the internal portion okay so now this gets embedded in the concrete this gets embedded in the concrete and now after you have removed this after you have removed this uh, you have certain device which can go inside it is like a it is like a female so now if you if you just uh, focus the camera on me uh, uh, it would be something like this uh, suppose this is internally threaded suppose this is uh, it's like this uh, they are internally threaded so i have certain bolt here which i can after this has been uh, uh, after this has been left inside the concrete surface uh, i will just put some bolt and then uh, which will go inside it and we just tighten it uh, do, do can you uh, imagine this okay and now once uh, i have made certain arrangement like this my bracket will come and my bracket will come and rest on this 
my bracket will come and rest on this so that the entire load is taken care by entire load is taken care by uh, the lost uh, by the form anchor which is already inside the concrete uh, do you understand the load carrying mechanism so you have you have one metallic thing which has already gone inside now those metallic things are internally threaded internally threaded so you have some other member coming and just going inside and through that projection you can just you can just uh, suspend your bracket suspend your bracket and that bracket would be now taking care of your loads coming from uh, your form work coming from your workers uh, coming from some of the equipments that you put on that so this is how this is how load transfer takes place and now you must be very clear that in this case you don't require any support from the ground so no matter whether you are doing it at 5 meter or 20 meter the load flow remains same load flow remains same so is the form work a uh, form anchor application clear to you technology class okay now now we see another family of accessories we call them as form ties form ties form ties sometimes they are also known as tie assembly sometimes they are also known as tie assembly remember these are all just an introduction i will show you the actual photograph of these tie rods i will show you the actual photograph of these form anchors but this is just the beginning this is just the beginning i want you to understand different materials that you are likely to be using in this particular course so what are the different timber material what are the different plywood what are the different uh, metallic components such as tim i mean me, uh, steel such as aluminium uh, what are the different other types of materials and now we are focusing on accessories so whenever we discuss the detailed formwork system for example the foundation formwork system the wall formwork system the column and beam formwork system there i will show you how each of these members are put in position i will show you the symmetric diagram i will show you the actual photographs also okay now coming back to this uh, form ties uh, basically these ties are secure uh, these ties are provided to secure the form work to secure the form work against the lateral pressure against the lateral pressure uh, in the next class i will tell you what is this lateral pressure uh, how to calculate this lateral pressure what are the different factors on which these uh, lateral pressures depend okay how to how to compute this lateral pressure using different uh, standards such as uh, american concrete institute standards or syria standards or whether it is din standard or indian standard i will give you all the models that are used to evaluate the lateral pressure in uh, next classes in next class when we take up the uh, design basics design basics for the time being just understand uh, this uh, simple uh, thing here uh, suppose you want to cast this wall cast this wall right okay now suppose there is nothing here so once you pour concrete you will find that they start flowing like this and you won't be able to get a shape like this get a shape like this not possible now the moment you put some barrier here in the form of form work you are blocking these concrete from going out so that is what we are calling the pressure exerted by this concrete onto the form work onto the form work right now in wall what is done is both sides you have this both sides you have this form work and then you have this metallic member metallic member we call them as tie rod tie rod so basically these tie rods take care of take care of 
the lateral pressure. So they are resisting all these pressures. They are resisting all these pressures, all these pressures. So you will find in some of the cases, if your tie rods are not strong, uh, you find that when the pressure exerted is high, they snap. They are broken. They are broken. And in that case, you will find that your wall has, uh, wall is not able to retain its shape. So the concrete may start uh, uh, flowing out, flowing out. So your shape will be disturbed. So that's why it is very important to, very important to uh, see that your tie rod designs are okay. And whatever design you have made for your tie rod, uh, similar uh, capability or similar strength tie rods are provided at site also, at site also. Now there are different types of ties. Uh, if you just look at this particular slide, uh, it gives you uh, the general classification of uh, tie rods. Uh, you classify them under two categories primarily. Uh, first one is continuous single member. Sometimes they are also known as a through tie or one piece tie. Uh, then you have a internally disconnecting tie. Under continuous single member, you have uh, four varieties, a uh, flat tie, loop tie, snap tie and tapper tie. And under internally disconnecting tie, uh, you have two broad categories, C bolt tie and coil tie, C bolt tie and coil tie. I will just show you some of the examples of uh, form tie and in this slide you can see uh, examples of anchor also. Anchor also, what I had shown you in simple uh, sketches there, uh, you can get more clarity uh, if you just look at this particular slide. Now if you look at the, if, if you look at this uh, serial number 5, 6 and 7 they give you some example of ties, they give you some example of ties. So if you look at the bottom two figures, bottom two figures, uh, you can understand uh, for what purpose they are being kept there and this is what I was trying to explain you uh, uh, previously by showing you one sketch of wall formwork. So this is what has been shown in this particular, this is what has been shown in this particular uh, slide. Uh, some more examples of ties you can see in this particular uh, slide. Uh, these are all your uh, single member tie or continuous tie, continuous tie. Uh, some more example here, some more clarity in photograph. Uh, the, the first one is the straight tie with attached elastic tube. The moment you put some elastic tube, uh, the ties can be retrieved. That means. Uh, these ties are going inside the plastic tube. So plastic tube is spoiled, spoiled, but the costly metal component, metallic component, you can take it out. But if you do not have these plastic tubes uh, cover on, uh, on your ties, you will find that your ties will be spoiled, your ties will be spoiled. So you will not be able to use them uh, more than once. So in order to protect those ties from getting embedded in the concrete surface, you sometimes you insert them inside some tubes. So th this is one tube and then you have, you have uh, this tie rod going here. So something like this. So what is happening? This uh, PVC tube, PVC tube will be uh, remaining in position and you will just take out this tie rod. You will just take out this tie rod. So is it clear to you when, uh, when do we use these uh, PVC tubes or plastic tubes and what for we use plastic tubes? Is it clear? Uh, if you if if I just have to make a sketch, suppose this is the this is the metallic member, this is the metallic member. Now I just uh, put them inside this PVC pipe. Now this PVC pipe will be in contact with concrete, so you will not be able to retrieve it back, but this one you can pull it out, this one you can pull it out. So the metal component is costly, so that you are able to take them out, but PVC is not that costly, you 
you can afford to keep them in the concrete itself. Uh, so, is it clear? Is it clear to you? Okay. Uh, some more examples of tie rod you can see here. This is a twisted wire loop wall tie. Uh, then uh, these are the internal disconnecting type. Uh, in this slide you can see the internal disconnecting type. Now as the name suggests, uh, it has got two components, one which is left inside the concrete and the second one which can be taken out, which can be taken out. So it can be disconnected from the embedded portion. So it can be, there are different ways through which you can, uh, you can make arrangement to disconnect. Uh, I will show you, I will show you. For example, if you just look at uh, this slide, uh, this gives you, this gives you uh, different routes. If you see the right hand picture, right hand uh, figure, uh, this gives you different ways to disconnect or snap your ties. Uh, uh, in most of the cases, what we do is, suppose this is your tie, this is your tie and uh, you want to break them. So, what you do? Uh, at this portion, you have this in the form of a neck, in the form of a neck. So, here you have reduced the area of cross section. So, the moment you pull it here, it will get broken from here and then you can disconnect it. So, is this clear? The concept wise, the concept is clear to you? Okay. So, what I do is, I stop at this particular point uh, and just quickly summarize, uh, just quickly summarize uh, whatever we have learnt in this particular class. Okay. Now, this was the third lecture as far as uh, formwork material is concerned. In the first lecture, I covered timber plywood. In the second lecture, I covered steel and aluminum. Uh, in this particular lecture, we covered plastic forms, which you can consider as an alternative, better alternative to wood. It has got different advantages that we discussed. Then we moved on to some other form materials, such as plaster of Paris forms, hard, hardboard, gypsum. Uh, these uh, or for that matter uh, fiber reinforced plastic forms, uh, these materials although they are not that commonly used, uh, they have certain utilities especially in some special situations. For example, in architectural application, for example, in waffle slab construction, especially when you have large number of uh, repetitions expected. So, just to get you an idea, so that you know that okay, such materials also exist. I gave you some brief introduction of these materials. Then we moved on to the accessories such as form linings, uh, form coating, uh, form linings we did not take up, uh, form coatings and release agents. I told you what for they are required, uh, what are their advantages, what are the common types of uh, form coating and release agents. Then we moved on to the form anchors. Uh, so, you know these, these are basically devices which are used uh, in the previously cast concrete so that it helps you in casting the subsequent pores, right. Then we finally moved on to the form ties. I explained you what for ties are used, what are the different varieties of ties and I just, you saw, I just showed you some uh, semantic sketches and I promise you that I will be showing you better photographs, real life photographs and some better sketches in subsequent classes when we take up uh, the dedicated systems for example, the wall formwork system and the column formwork system, slab and beam formwork system and so on. So I stop at this point and uh, I would invite if you have got any doubt please feel free to ask. Thank you. No doubt. Thank you. Okay, tomorrow we are meeting again. Uh, so, Dr. Vasant Matsagar ma uh, might have announced, I am going to take uh, his class tomorrow. But I will be covering this particular course only in his slot. So, please bring the notebook of ECL 706 only. Okay.
tomorrow the last class is that okay, okay. thank you and good night